The Angelica Touch by Lindsay Jane Sedgwick. Chapter One. My name is Angelica Moon. I'm neither a vampire with gold eyes and the need to drain cute boy bands of blood, nor a werewolf. You could say my father was a whale, but even that's pushing it a bit. I live with my mum, Molly, in the Drishok Arms Hotel. It sits on a rugged peninsula elbowing into the Atlantic on the most westerly coast of Donegal. This is the most westerly part of the west of Ireland and pretty far west Europe-wise making for a lot of thunder, hail and storms. We found an empty coffin once and a beach full of mannequin arms, all left-handed. I'm sure drugs have washed up too and maybe a body or two, but nobody will admit it to me. Apparently I'm too young. Pointless to say I'm 14. People who say I'm too young smile when I do, as if my response proves to them that they are completely right. But then they don't know me. It's not their fault, but I've been way ahead of them since the day I was born. Being small and a little bit on the blue to purple range, I was swaddled tightly before I was handed to mum. The paediatrician, with a mouthful of teeth that resembled a tiger, told her how much work I'd given him and that she must call me Michaela after him. He was grumpy, since he always gave up smoking and toffee in August. As mum unwrapped the blue blanket, beams of light flooded the room. Blinded, the doctor reeled away like a fish fighting a hook. Mum didn't even notice. She was busy smiling at me. And I was enjoying being born at last. My mother didn't call me Michaela. She was afraid if she called me Michaela, I'd grow teeth like his and never write poetry. No, nope. she and dad named me Angelica because of the beautiful downy wings with which I was born. Afraid that it would make it difficult for me to wear nice clothes as I grew up, mum folded them away and laid me down to sleep. With my wings tucked away and my rays exhausted for the day, my angelic powers flowed into one hot little fist. It latched onto the thumb of the first midwife to lean down over my cot. Oh, what a tight grip, sweetheart, she said. I held on so fast that she called for assistance. The doctor came running, wearing sunglasses because he didn't trust me and hadn't realised I was an angel. As, her, as his fingers unwrapped my hand from the midwife's thumb, they banged heads, met each other's eyes and fell in love. Mum said she returned from the loo and they were kissing over my cot. Me? I was fast asleep. Thumb released, job done. My wings, not being used, fell away within days. All that's left are pronounced shoulder blades I could squish bison with, if there were any bison in Donegal. Or I was into squishing, which I'm not, generally. My father, Jeremy, was a film director. Mum said he was six feet tall in his handmade leather boots with tapered toes. The boots had tapered toes, not my dad. Anyway, his moustache tickled Mum's neck when they danced. She says this was nice, I'm not so sure. She was doing street theatre in Dublin during summer holidays from uni. He said he would make her immortal. They danced all through the pregnancy. It was like dancing inside a moonbeam, she said. My feet didn't touch the ground. I did not inherit my dad's talent for dancing. It's not that I have two left feet, only that my right foot thinks that it is his sole job, duty, goal in life to trip up my left. Yeah, it's odd, but my feet definitely feel male. Maybe because I can't trust them not to get me into school without providing some sort of embarrassing double flip, tip and bump manoeuvre. Neither did I get his height, his film star looks, or his charm. Mostly all I share with Dad, genetically, <coughs> is red hair. Unfortunately, it's not the sort of red that makes Hollywood directors go, wow. It's the sort that causes people to tumble over laughing, and it's always tangled. Even brushed my hair is snarly, and it never ever stays up in a scrunchie. This is a real disadvantage when you live in the windy west of Ireland. Dad was filming something very big out on the North Sea when I was born. He postponed the shoot for 24 hours to fly in and see me being born. Then, when he returned to the set, he was shooting at this scene from a boat in the water, a scene in which the heroine galloped along a coral beach pursued by scores of hunters. It was okay, once she hit the water, she turned back into a mermaid. Only Dad never filmed that bit, because the tail of a whale whipped him into the foamy water. Before you could say action or cut, he had been swallowed whole. Apparently the water burped. That's how they knew there was no point looking for a body. Mum cried for two days. Then she stopped and said that Dad wouldn't, want, wouldn't have wanted that. Not that he'd have wanted to be swallowed whole by a whale either, but at least it was fast. And besides, she had me. 
Her dreams of being a movie star scuppered by several hundred weight of blubber. blubber. Mum became a chambermaid with a baby on her back while she completed her degree in hotel management by night. Unaware of her tragedy, I and my gift blossomed. Forget rays of light or banging heads, according to Mum, she had only to leave me in the room with two mismatched individuals and love would erupt between them. In our first hotel, the concierge ran away with the maitre d' of the restaurant after minding me for less than an hour while Mum changed the bridal suite. Over lunch in the staff room at our next hotel, I notched up love between two waitresses, between the bar manager and a gangly man from the bakery. But it was only when the head chef ran off with the owner's daughter on our third day that Mum was let go. Again. Everywhere I went, hearts beat faster, eyes dilated and hands shook. Mum didn't see it as a gift, which is fair enough since she was the one being blamed for the staff being distracted, burning food, tripping over invisible gnomes and skipping away into sunsets. We left a lot of jobs. By the time I was seven, the rumour had spread throughout Dublin and the county that staff trouble followed, followed Molly Malone. Molly Moon. Sorry. The only place that would employ her as an assistant manageress was a backstreet hotel in which no questions were ever asked and everyone was far too miserable to think about love. Mum declared it was time for the Moons to move out of the city. We combed the papers and the websites. Mum put her name down with several agencies, but in the end, it was a simple ad in a newspaper. I'd have missed it too if it hadn't been for the picture of a whale in the corner. Mum was on the phone when I told her arm. Her copy had gone cold with this oily surface of dead cream. Mum, look. Imaginative and enthusiastic manager wanted. Remote Irish hotel. Gemini's only need applies. To be continued. <laughs>